Is this what we're going to see or we, we will see it in, in real time and uh, in real life? Uh, it is very interesting because you know that uh, in Tiangong 2 the space will be much larger than in the spaceship. So maybe uh, when they come into the laboratory it will be a uh, some kind of floating uh, status, uh -huh. uh, very interesting. And you know that for the first time in Shenzhou 9 mission, Mr. Jing Haipeng is the uh, uh, first one to come into the uh, space laboratory. He, he cannot even stand very stable, mm. uh, so it is very interesting. But they will be familiar with this uh, status very soon, because you know that uh, on, the, uh, on the walls of the laboratory, there are handles and, and other, uh, other uh, devices to uh, fix their uh, feet. So they can do any operations very normally. So that, that's an interesting point that you mentioned. Uh, when they are carrying out these operations, they have to be anchored. To Absolutely. The, yeah. If you are not anchored, yeah. any, uh, any action of your hands will also influence the whole body mm. of you. So uh, it is very interesting that uh, the mainly depends on some, uh, some, uh, something, uh, some, uh, some strings, uh, something like that, to fix their yeah. feet. Only under these conditions, they can do any operation of their hands. So this is why also they're carrying a, an experiment called uh, onboard robotic arm. Uh -huh. So the robotic arm can be have uh, can have less uh, effect of microgravity and have more precision in operating. So onboard um, robotics are, are become very popular. The uh, ISS International Ground uh, Space Station has already equipped with a few uh, robotic arms, e internal and externally. And uh, later on, uh, you can see from the left side of the picture, you can see the hatch of uh, the, Shen uh, the Tiangong 2. Yes. And yeah. later on, if the astronaut opens, uh, you could see the, the astronaut will, will flow into the Tiangong 2. Yes, from I, this, I think this that's camera. the point that we're yes. all waiting for yes. uh, with great anticipation to see that. And uh, you think that may be very soon? I think it will happen in maybe um, 20 or 30 minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, they're currently now uh, checking. Uh, they, could s they could see the in inside of the, the Tiangong 2 at uh, this moment, and they can open the hatch anytime. Uh, uh, based on the command of the ground crew, uh, they, could, they could start operating this uh, if the ground crew have a, a, a green light to go, to go ahead. Right. Before opening the hatch, as you mentioned, the astronaut must uh, fix himself or anchor himself uh, because he needs to rotate the handle. Yes, and yeah. without if fixing he, himself, he anchoring, cannot do this. He will and float. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when he rotates on this direction, his yeah. body will, uh, will rotate on the other direction. So that, that will be very difficult for him. And this is true also, I, I understand, uh, when the astronauts are sleeping. Uh, they have to be in a uh, uh, sleeping uh, bed which is also anchored and they, they have to wear gloves I understand too. Just explain how uh, this is um, you know, uh, why this is the case. You know because there is no gravity uh, in, the, uh, in space so they do not need a bed. Usually they use some kind of sleeping bags uh, and uh, actually speaking uh, the bag, uh, usually there is a configuration for two astronauts sleeping in the bags uh, on SS but most uh, astronauts are uh, fond of sleep everywhere the, uh, the only thing they need to do is to fix themselves because without fixing themselves they can fly everywhere and also there, there is another important issue you see that because there is no natural ventilation in space because there is no gravity and the carbon dioxide if there is no any ve ventilation the, the, the carbon di dioxide they breathe out will they will be everywhere uh, around his head so they will be fair, feel very inconvenient so yes. the ventilation is very important yeah. for a very convenient sleeping of the astronauts mm. uh, they, they certainly wouldn't want any kind of a fog uh, over their visual um, aspect to prevent them from seeing what's going on because uh, that's uh, so crucial in this experiment. Uh, as far as the um, uh, lives of the astronauts are concerned, uh, they've now been uh, on this mission for just uh, a short time, but it's going to last for, is it 32 days? Uh, 30 days in the space laboratory, yes, and yeah. uh, the whole mission will take about uh, three days. You know that they've already in stayed in space for two days. Mm. So uh, since the launch, they are in the different, uh, different position. 
but in the same orbit. So uh, the the uh, the Shenzhou 11 uh, spaceship is chasing the uh, Tiangong 2 laboratory uh, one circle by one circle, and after two days, they are now together and form a combination. So they will uh, uh, then the astronaut will stay in the Tiangong laboratory for another 30 days. After that, they will separate from the Tiangong 2 laboratory and stay one additional day to waiting for the re-entry. You know that there are also many complex operations because they, first they need to uh, change their orbit, have an orbit maneuver to uh, change its orbit uh, from the Tiangong 2 laboratory to a different one. Yes. And then separate of the orbit module and then re-entry. So that's a very uh, uh, complex uh, uh, operation and need also additional one day. So totally speaking, they will stay in space for 33 days. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, Professor Xu, uh, just uh, explain to us now what, uh, what we're seeing uh, because the, uh, the move has changed a little. Uh, we, we've had this uh, view for some time now, but just explain to us uh, what we can see. Well, I think uh, we're seeing right now is uh, the hatch of the Tiangong 2 window. I'm sure the uh, astronauts has carefully cleaned the window, which has the, uh, collected 30 days of space environment. Yes. And that tissue will be uh, carefully returned back to Earth. And uh, they, uh, they can see very clearly the inside of the Tiangong 2, and they're at the hatch and waiting for the command uh, to open that hatch. Uh, on the right side, uh, you can see part of the uh, connection between Tiangong and the, the Shenzhou. And uh, the astronauts, I think, is uh, anchoring himself, uh, uh, ready for the opening of the hatch. Right. Do you know who that is in the, at the moment? We can see part of, uh, <laughs> is it Jing Haipeng or Chen Dong? <laughs> I think probably Jing Haipeng because uh, he's been there for three he's, times. He's the most experienced, isn't he? Yes, it? and this yeah. is a very critical uh, operation of the astronauts. Mm. It, it is a tradition to let the commander of the mission, the crew, oh. uh, to entering the laboratory first. Uh, so in Shenzhou 9, it's Jing Haipeng, and the second time for Shenzhou 10 is Mr. Nye Haisheng, and this time again is the Jing Haipeng. Yeah. And you can see on the right side of the video is that as mentioned the camera from the the head of the uh, the head of the astronaut and you can see uh, on this uh, on this picture uh, on the, left? the left side yeah. is the window uh, or the hatch of the Tiangong 2 and on it's just a uh, just a business, uh, just on the right uh, is uh, is a metal plate or a guide petal of the docking mechanism so you can see that uh, this petal is very important for the docking procedure because it can uh, e uh, eliminate all the uh, attitude errors during the docking procedure. And now it is in the uh, inside uh, channel of the crew transportation channel. Okay. There are three these kind of plates on the docking me mechanism. Three of them? Yes. Okay. And the actual um, movement of the, uh, the docking procedure, everything that has gone on in, this, uh, in these past few hours, uh, once again, as I say, we're getting people tuning into this program uh, every minute, uh, but some would have missed what's gone on. How many hours ago did we begin this? Well, the, the, uh, the uh, rendezvous and docking started about five hours ago. Mm -hmm. uh, when the orbit has been changed to the orbit uh, of the Tiangong. We're, we're, we're just interrupting you. We're getting some instructions now. What are we hearing? Yes. The instruction has uh, has been said that we're ready to open the hatch. Okay. Uh, the uh, the front uh, the the flight control center has uh, told the crew that the pressure has already been the same right. uh, because before that we need to have an uh, open uh, pressure equivalent valve to make the pressure between the two vehicles the same. Only under this condition we can open the hatch. Okay. Well now we're getting to the point where it, it could well be that this uh, hatch is going to be opened. Yes, uh, right now the, uh, the command said uh, ready to open the hatch and uh, make full video uh, footage of the whole process. Right. There must be a lot of tension uh, in the ground control center as well. Uh, uh, not to say that there's none up there in the sky, because there must be indeed. But uh, this is a critical point, okay. isn't it? Okay, you can, you can see the rotation of the handle. Okay, now it is a procedure to open the hatch. Mm -hmm. Oh, they need many circles. How many circles do they need before they can get this open? I think three and a half circles. Right. 
Okay. So in fact, the most critical part has passed because the uh, the touching of the two vehicles is very crucial. Yes. At this moment, everything has been uh, okay, validated. Okay, the hatch is open. Doors. The hatch is opening now. So there it is. The the hatch opens and. Uh, where well, you can hear the uh, applause coming from the ground control center. So, just uh, walk us through this next uh, stage. Well, the next stage, the astronauts will go into the Tiangong 2, and the first thing, they will switch on the carbon dioxide detector, detector right. because the carbon dioxide is crucial and it's fatal sometimes. Uh, so it has to switch on the car carbon dioxide detector uh, to start the ventilation. Yes. And the next move is to move the ventilation pipe to the capsule. So these two moves are done. They can start moving stuff from the capsule to the uh, Tiangong Space Lab. Right. And how long is that uh, stage likely to take? Well, this stage will take... Uh, it depends on how many things they brought with them. Mm. Uh, quite a few things and quite a few hours, I would say. Yes. But the switch on... Of the uh, the carbon dioxide detector is quite a very very simple, right? And the uh, the pipe has been connected uh, somehow already halfway. And during the stay of the astronauts in uh, in the combination, the life support system will be mainly charged by Tiangong Two, and the Tiangong uh, and the Shenzhou spaceship will keep its status uh, uh, before the separation. And now the astronauts are going inside the. So the picture you've been looking for, forward to is the floating of the astronauts into Tiangong Yes, two. that's right. It's happening very soon. Okay, now I'm sure many of our viewers have watched our preview uh, of this uh, mission and uh, seen those animated uh, uh, shots of the uh, astronauts going in. And now you're about to see, there they go, the real thing is happening, wow. <laughs> Isn't that exciting? <laughs> like he's swimming. <laughs> That's wonderful. We can get them away from our studio too. Wish they could see us. So that is uh, the first astronaut is there, and uh, oh. and the door is closing. <laughs> yeah, the door is closing. So he has to fix the door. So oh. uh, but this lashing. time, you know, that uh, Mr. Jing Haipeng is yes. the first one to enter in Tiangong One. Yes. And this time, it seems that he's much more experienced than before. And this time, his action is more stable than the first time. Ah. Oh. Right. It looks very stable to me. <laughs> uh, everything is going according to plan. That's uh, wonderful. But the important thing you have to note is that once the two astronauts are in this capsule, mm -hmm. uh, in fact, this uh, vehicle is flying backward. The Tiangong 2 uh -huh. is readying itself by opening the door backward. Uh, oh. ready for Shenzhou 11. Yes. So it's currently still flying backward and the next move is to have a 180 degree turn right. to, to make sure that the, uh, the Shenzhou fly ahead of Tiangong 2. Oh, I see. Okay. So this is another uh, a crucial part of the mission. Can you just uh, give us an idea of what's being said there? To, uh We heard some instructions coming. Uh, because there are also many uh, devices and instruments to uh, echo the status of Tiangong 2. So they need to adjust these kind of uh, instruments and uh, press some, maybe press some buttons to adjust the status uh -huh. of Tiangong 2. And also the whole uh, combination. Because before the flight, uh, both astronauts are well trained for management of the combination. It is very complex because you need to handle two spacecrafts yes. and uh, how to control the attitude, how to manage the, the electricity uh, supply is a, is a very com uh, complicated issue. And the voltage between the two vehicles are different because, uh, you know, our Tiangong 1 and the Tiangong 2 use the uh, electric supply system with a voltage of about 100 volt. Right. Well, the Shenzhou spaceship with a power supply of 28 volts, so we need a conversion. So you can see from the right side of the picture, the astronauts are busy making connections uh -huh. between the Tiangong and Shenzhou on a number of uh, uh, connections uh, could be electronically, yes. could be air conditions, could be uh, uh, water supplies and others. So there are many connections that need to be made uh, before these two modules can fly as one. Uh -huh. So the other astronauts probably in the, in the 
in the Tengong 2 is switching on a number of uh, onboard equipment. I'm sure he's behind the camera. And this one is busy at the hatch uh, between the connections and making, uh, uh, making the necessary connections between the two. Yes, well, this is um, a, a point where uh, we could say that housekeeping duties are taking place now before uh, the next stage of the mission begins. Uh, I'm curious to know, what would the temperature be uh, now? It, it obviously has to be the same, moving from one craft to the other. Um, would we be looking at something like uh, 22 degrees uh, Celsius? Uh, the, like that? The, there is a specification of the temperature. The mm. temperature is set to 21 degrees oh, uh, 21. centigrade, mm -hmm. and uh, it can be deviated to uh, between 20 to 25, mm -hmm. and the humidity is 30 to 40 percent and can be adjusted. Right. And uh, the noise uh, condition is less than 120 dB. Oh, okay. So uh, these are the conditions on board uh, and uh, the equipment will make necessary adjustment uh, for these temperatures. All right, well we're going to um, move from our studio to Wu Guqiu who is uh, our reporter uh, at the Beijing Aerospace Command uh, Control Center. Uh, Guo Xu, uh, there must be a lot of excitement there because we heard all the applause. What's uh, been the reaction to today's mission? Well, uh, when, uh, it was a very amazing moment when we finally saw the two astronauts floated into the space lab and we, uh, all people here uh, cannot help just uh, uh, applauding, uh, applauding to that. And now we have uh, a guest, Mr. Tui Xiaofeng, who, who is from the Aerospace Control Center. He is going to join me to share uh, with me his ex. Uh, feelings of today's operation. And now, uh, Mr. Tui, uh, what was your job during this operation just now? And what was your concern just now? Yes, well, as we can see, the two astronauts have boarded the Tiangong 2, and uh, which means this is a remarkable success in this mission. Um, as for my job at the Beijing Aerospace Control Center, I have been focused uh, on the correctly running of our commanding and uh, control systems, which responsible for the sending and uh, sending of the every piece of the tight control command to Shenzhou 11 and Tiangong 2, processing every byte of the telemetry data from the spacecrafts, uh, calculating the most accurate orbits and uh, displaying and visualizing the status of every component on the spacecrafts. Mm -hmm. uh, during the docking process, a series of crucial events occurred in real time, and our systems needed to respond and act uh, precisely and uh, rapidly. I'm very glad that our system has accomplished uh, all the tasks perfectly. We will leave our uh, coverage there from the ground centre and let's go back to our studio guests and uh, we have with us Professor Yang Yuguang and uh, also uh, Xu Yansong who's Director of the International Cooperation of the China National Space Administration. Uh, just uh, update us now will you because uh, as we heard from the Chief Engineer uh, speaking a short uh, time ago this has become a remarkable success for China's space mission. But indeed, these two astronauts, you have seen that they have saluted. And uh, the, one of the maneuvers they have to make is, you know, uh, to report on the connection uh, between Tiangong uh, 2 and Shenzhou 11. So they have reported the success, uh, successful docking and rendezvous movement of Tiangong and Shenzhou. So that uh, mission has been reported by the astronauts uh, as a success. So what's the next uh, stage that will take place? Uh, what's their next major uh, activity now that, now that they've arrived? 
I believe one important thing is to upload the uh, some kind of payload from the Shenzhou 11 spaceship to Tiangong 2 laboratory. You see, uh, they will stay in space for about 30 uh, for uh, in the laboratory for 30 days. So uh, there are some uh, also some supply from the Shenzhou spaceship to this uh, Tiangong laboratory, and also we will have some scientific research payload from the Shenzhou 11 uh, to this Tiangong 2 laboratory. Uh, you know that uh, because we will have some kind of science. Uh, Relation and outreach experiment. One of them are raised by the uh, uh, by the students from Hong Kong, and one of uh, one of these experiments is very, very interesting. Will be the cultivation of silkworms. So. Uh, this kind of uh, biological experiment can only perform the very in a very short period. So these kind of experimental payloads can only be uploaded by the Shenzhou spaceship itself. And also, uh, as we have seen before, that uh, we need to control the life support system of the both vehicles. That will be very uh, critical for ensure the safety of the astronaut. So they need to uh, not only uh, monitoring everything, and but also do something to do some operation to change the status. Because before this, the, the life support system of the uh, astronauts are, cha are charged by the Shenzhou 11 sp uh, spaceship. Okay. Uh, during the uh, during the uh, combination uh, combination uh, period, uh, the life support system will be charged by the Tiangong Two, and the Shenzhou Eleven will be in uh, uh, some kind of uh, hibernating status. So many uh, status, many switches must be uh, switched uh, yeah. during this procedure, and only after this preparation work, they can uh, live normally in the Tiangong Two laboratory for these thirty days. Okay, all right. Well, let's uh, go back. Back to uh, Wu Guoshu, who's in the uh, ground control centre here in Beijing. What's uh, the latest you've got for us there, Guoshu? All right, Edwin, let me continue with my chat with Mr. Tui from the control center now. And Mr. Tui, uh, now I'm, I'm going to ask my second question. What will be the major tasks for this control center in the next month? Okay, the completion of the docking. Uh, it's the exact starting point of the following long-term stay in the space lab for 30 days. During this period, uh, see a lot of uh, scientific experiments and engineering tasks will be carried out uh, by means of the coordination um, of the astronauts in the space and the operators on the ground. Um, you know, the main core, ta uh, the core objective of this mission is to test the supportive capability of the long-term stay in the sky, uh, in the space. Uh, so there, will be a, uh, there will still will be a lot of work ahead for this control center. Uh, Mr. Sui, uh, thank you for uh, thank you for your time and thank you for the interview. At when uh, we we know that the uh, the. Uh, this moment is only a short time break for the control center and more work are waiting ahead uh, for the staff here like Mr. Tui. Back to you. All right, thank you, Guoshu. That's uh, Wu Guoshu there at the uh, command center here in Beijing. And we have our studio guest with us. Uh, we have uh, Xu Yan Song, who is director of the International Cooperation of the China National Space Administration, and Professor Yang Yuguang from the China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation.